In this video, we are going to see PERT project evaluation and review techniques. So generally, there are two main basic techniques are available in project management. The first one is CPM that is critical path method and second one is PERT project evaluation and review techniques. So we have already discussed about critical path method in a separate video. In that video, we have discussed how to construct the CPM network, determine the critical path and project completion time and computation of total floats and free floats for non-critical activities. All these things we have discussed in detail in that particular video. So now we are going to see PERT. Okay, so there is a small difference between uh, CPM and PERT. So in CPM, for each and every activities timings are deterministic in nature that is for each and every activity only a single duration will be given with that we have to proceed everything but whereas uh, in PERT each activity will have three time estimates the three time estimates are the first one is optimistic time second time is most likely time and the third one is pessimistic time so with this we need to proceed everything so this is the basic difference between cpm and pert so now we are going to discuss pert along with one problem look at the problem consider the following table summarizing the details of a project so here we have 10 activities a to j and predecessors also given for each and every activities okay then duration i told you know for each and every activity three time estimates are given so first one is optimistic time for the each and every activities and second one is most likely times and the third one is pessimistic times so these are the three time estimates are given for each and every activities separately with this information they ask you to construct the project network and second one find the expected duration and variance of each activity and third one find the critical path and expected project completion time and the last one what is the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks these are the things we need to find with the help of this information okay so now first we are going to see how to construct the project network see in order to construct the project network we need to have two important informations first one is activity and second one is predecessors okay here we have 10 activities a b c d e f g h i j and predecessors are for A, B, C, there is no predecessor and for D, A is there no. So, where A is completed, there you can start activity D. Okay, at the same time, you have to check whether the particular activity is a predecessor for any other activity. See, D is there no. So, D is a predecessor for activity I. Okay, in the same way, look at the next activity, activity E. So, activity E starts where B is completed at the same time check e is the predecessor for any other activity yes e is there so e is the predecessor for activity h at the same time e ends along with f both e and f together completed in one particular node okay look at the next activity so activity f starts where activity C is ended at the same time F ended along with the other activity that is uh, along with E. So activity F starts where C ended and activity F ended along with E. Next activity is G. So G starts where activity C is ended at the same time G is a predecessor for activity J. Here, G and H together completed in one particular node. The next activity is H. So, activity H starts where E and F is ended. Okay. At the same time, H is the predecessor for activity J. But here, H and G together ends in a same node. The next activity is I. I starts where activity D is ended. Okay, the last one is J. So, J is the activity which starts where H and G 
ended so this is the relationship between different activities and predecessors so with this you can start construct the project network now we are going to see how to construct the project network so look at the problem for activity a b and c there is no predecessor okay so straight away you can start with a b c for each and every activity we need to have two nodes first one is starting node and another one is ending node okay so this one is starting node and this one is ending node for activity a we need to have two nodes starting node and ending node at the same time for activity b also this is the starting node and here we ends okay activity b okay at the same time activity c this one is starting node this one is ending node for activity a for activity b also starting node ending node for activity c starting node ending node so without any predecessors these are the three activities straight away starts now let us see the problem look at the next activity activity d starts where activity a is ended see activity a is ended here now you have to start activity d from here node number 5 activity d the next activity is e so activity e starts where activity b is ended see activity b ended here now you have to start activity e from here next activity activity f so activity f starts where activity c is ended at the same time f ended along with the other activity that is uh, along with e activity f starts from here and ends along with e the next activity is g so activity g starts where activity c is ended c ended here from here you have to start next activity that is g The next activity is H. So H starts where E and F ended. At the same time, H ends along with G. See, here E and F ended together here. Now you have to start the next activity. The next activity is H. H starts from here and ended along with G. The next activity is I. I starts where activity D is ended. Activity D ended here. From here you have to start I. The last activity is J. So activity J starts where activity H and G is ended. So activity G and H ended here. You have to start from here and this is the last activity node. So end up with the last node that is our last node is 8. With this information we have constructed the project network. Let us see the next calculation. The next one is find the expected duration and variance of each activity. Okay, look at the problem. Here we have 10 activities. For each and every activities, there are three expected times are given. The first one is optimistic time. The next one is most likely time. And the last one is pessimistic time. Okay, with this information, we need to find expected duration and variance. Expected duration means it's just like a mean duration that is average. Then we have to find the variance. In order to calculate the expected duration and variance, we need to use some formulas calculation of the expected duration and variance of each activity here 10 activities are given and three estimated times also given optimistic most likely and pessimistic so with this we need to find mean duration mean means expected duration mean duration and the next one is variance Okay, so in order to calculate mean duration, that is average, we need to use one formula. 
formine that is TE. TE stands for expected duration. Expected duration means mean duration. TE is equal to optimistic time plus 4 times of most likely time plus pessimistic time divided by average that is 6. Optimistic time, pessimistic time and 4 times of most likely time. Total together 6. So with this formula you can find the average that is expected duration. That is mean duration. So this is the formula to calculate the expected duration for each and every activity. For the first activity A. 5 plus 6 into 4 plus 7 divided by 6. For activity A, 5 plus 4 times of 6 plus 7 divided by 6. 5 plus 6 into 4, 24. So 5 plus 24 plus 7 divided by 6 is equal to 6. At the same time for B, for activity B, 1 plus 4 into 3 plus 5 divided by 6. 1 plus 4 into 3 plus 5 divided by 6 is equal to 1 plus 12 plus 5 divided by 6. Answer is 3. In the same way, we need to find the mean duration for each and every activity. For activity A, the mean duration is 6. For activity B, mean duration is 3. For activity C, 1 plus 4 into 4 plus 7 divided by 6 is equal to 4. For activity D, 1 plus 4 into 2, 8 plus 3 divided by 6, 2. For activity E, 1 plus 4 into 2, 8 plus 9 divided by 6, 3. For F, 1 plus 4 into 5, 20 plus 9 divided by 6, 5. For G, 2 plus 4 into 2, 8 plus 8 divided by 6, 3. For activity H, 4 plus 4 into 4, 16 plus 10 divided by 6, 5. Then activity I, 2 plus 4 into 5, 20 plus 8 divided by 6, 5. For J, 2 plus 4 into 2, 8 plus 8 divided by 6, 3. In this way, you can find mean duration. The next one is variance. For variance also, there is a formula. The formula for variance is square of standard deviation. That is a pessimistic time minus optimistic time divided by 6 whole square. This is the formula to find out variance for each and every activity. That is pessimistic time minus optimistic time divided by 6 whole square. For activity A, pessimistic time is 7, optimistic time is 5. So 7 minus 5 divided by 6 whole square. 7 minus 5, 2. 2 by 6 whole square. Answer is 2 divided by 6 just whole square answer 0.11 the variance for the first activity is 0 0.11 0 0.11 for the second activity pessimistic time is 5 minus optimistic time is 1 so 5 minus 1 4 divided by 6 whole square for activity b pessimistic time is 5 minus optimistic time is 1 divided by 6 whole square 4 by 6 whole square 4 divided by 6 point six 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 whole square point double four zero point four four zero point 
four four. In the same way, we need to find variance for each and every activity separately. For activity C, seven minus one divided by six whole square. Answer one. For activity D, three minus one divided by six whole square. Point one one. For activity E, nine minus one divided by six whole square. One point seven eight. For activity F, nine minus one divided by six whole square. One point seven eight. Then activity G, eight minus two divided by six whole square. One. For activity H, ten minus four divided by six whole square. One. For activity I. 8 minus 2 divided by 6 whole square. Again 1. For the last activity, 8 minus 2 divided by 6 whole square. Again 1. So with this formula, we have calculated variance for each and every activity. Look at the problem. So far we have done the first one, construct the project network, and second one, find the expected duration and variance of each activity. Now we are going to see. Find the critical path and expected project completion time. See, in order to find the critical path and expected project completion time, we need to have duration for each and every activity. So, in this problem, we have three estimated times: no, optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic time. Here, we need to take the mean duration, that is, expected duration for each and every activity that we have calculated in the previous calculation. See mean duration, that is expected duration for each and every activity. Now we have to note down all these duration in the project network. For activity A, duration is six weeks. For activity B, three. For activity C, four. For activity D, two. For activity E, three. For F, five. For G, three. For H, five. For I, five. For J. Three for A six, for B three weeks, for C four weeks, for D two weeks, for E three weeks, for F five weeks, for G three weeks, for H five weeks, for I five weeks. For J, three weeks. After entering the expected duration for each and every activities, the next step is we need to find critical path. In order to find out the critical path, it has two phases. Phase one is determine earliest start time of all the nodes. So this is called as forward pass. The second step is determine latest completion time of various node. This is called as backward. Pass. These are the important steps need to be follow in order to find out the critical path. Let me show the calculation for earliest start time and latest completion time for each and every nodes. For each and every node, we need to find earliest start time and latest completion time. So here we have two squares. No, the lower square denotes. Uh, Earliest start time. The upper square denotes latest completion time. So we need to find earliest start time and latest completion time for each and every node separately. In order to find out the earliest start time for each and every node, there is a formula. Okay, we have to use the formula to find out the earliest start time for each and every node. For the first activity, that is for the first node, the earliest start time should be zero. You have to start with zero. Let me explain the formula to calculate earliest start time for other nodes. So this is the formula to find out the earliest start time. That is, earliest start time is equal to maximum of earliest start time of ith node plus duration for the particular activity. Okay, so when we have two options to move on from one node to another node, we have to take the maximum value. So let me explain this formula along with the problem. 
see for the first node earliest start time is 0 ok so now we have to find the earliest start time for node 2 so the previous node starting time is 0 0 plus duration of this particular activity is 6 so 0 plus 6 is equal to 6 ok node 2 is over now see the node 3 for node 3 the previous node is 1 so earliest start time of node 1 is 0, 0 plus 3, 3. So earliest start time for node 3 is 3. For node 4 also the previous node is 1. So earliest start time of node 1 is 0. So 0 plus 4, 4. So earliest start time for node 4 is 4. 0 plus 4 is equal to 4. Okay, now see the fifth node. For node 5, the previous node is 2. So earliest start time for node 2 is 6. So 6 plus 2, 8. Next, node 6. See, when we see node 6, here we have two options. That is, the node 6 starts after completing third node and after completing fourth node. So here we have two options. So we need to take the maximum value. Okay, for this one, for node 3, the starting time is 3. So 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Whereas for node 4, the starting time is 4. So 4 plus 5, 9. So which one is maximum? 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. But 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So this one is the maximum value. For forward pass, we need to take the maximum value. So 4 plus 5 is equal to 9. So earliest start time for node 6 is 9. Then node 7. For node 7 also, here we have two options. That is from 4 to 7 and from 6 to 7. Again, you have to find the maximum value. So look at this. For node 4, the earliest start time is 4. So 4 plus 3 is equal to 7 or 9 plus 5 is equal to 14. So which one is maximum? 9 plus 5 is equal to 14. 14 is the maximum value when compared to this calculation. So take 14 as earliest start time for node 7. Then the last one is 8. For 8 again we have two options. The first option is 5 to 8. The second option 7 to 8. So again you have to find the maximum value. For 5 to 8 the earliest start time is 8 plus 5 is equal to 13 or 14 plus 3 is equal to 17. So which one is maximum? 17 is the maximum. So we have to take 17 as earliest start time of node 8. After completing the earliest start time of each and every nodes, now we need to find the latest completion time for each and every node. So the latest completion time is otherwise called as backward pass. For backward pass, we have to start from the last node. Okay, for the earliest starting time, we have started with the first node but when we calculate the latest completion time we have to start from the last node and you have to take the same value as latest completion time for the last node see for the last node the latest completion time is same 17 okay now we have to apply the formula to find out the latest completion time for each and every node separately so this is the formula to find out the latest completion time that is latest completion time of ith node is equal to minimum of latest completion time of jth node minus duration of i and j activity so now let me explain this formula along with the problem see the latest completion time for the last node is 17. So now we have to calculate the latest completion time for the previous node. The previous node is 7. Okay. So 17 minus 3. 17 minus 3 is equal to 14. The next node is 6. For 6, the previous latest completion time is 14. 14 minus 5 is equal to 9. Okay, the next node is 5. For 5, just see the previous one. The last node is 17. 17 minus 5 is equal to 12. 
Next one is note 4. See, for note 4, we have two options. Okay, that is from 7 to 4 or from 6 to 4. So, here we have two options now. So, in that case, we need to take the minimum value. Okay, so see the first one. 14 minus 3 is equal to 11. Whereas, uh, see this one. 9 minus 5 is equal to 4. So, which one is least value? This one is the least value. That is, 9 minus 5 is equal to 4 is the least value when compared to this one. So, take 4 as latest completion time for node 4. The next one is node 3. For node 3, we have only one option. That is, uh, 6 to 3. So, the latest completion time for node 6 is 9. So, 9 minus 3 is equal to 6. Latest completion time for node 3 is 6. The next one, 2. For node 2, the latest completion time for the next one is 12. So, 12 minus 2 is equal to 10. Node 2 is over. Now see node 1. For node 1 here we have 3 options. That is 2 to 1, 3 to 1 and 4 to 1. So here we need to find the minimum value. So see the first option. The latest completion time of node 2 is 10. So 10 minus 6 is equal to 4. Second option is uh, node 3. For node 3 the latest completion time is 6. So 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. Okay, the next option is 4 to 1. For note 4, the latest completion time is 4. So, 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So, which one is minimum value? 0 is the minimum value when compared to this one and this one. So, now we have to take this value. That is 4 minus 4 is equal to 0. So, we have got the earliest start time and latest completion time for each and every note separately. Now, we can find out the critical path. Critical path is the longest path in the network. So, in order to find out the critical path, we need to check three conditions. Okay, the first condition is the earliest starting time of the starting node must be equal to latest completion time of the same starting node. Okay, both earliest start time must be equal to latest completion time of each and every starting node. This is the first condition for critical path. And the second one is earliest starting time of ending node must be equal to latest completion time of ending node. The third one is earliest start time of completing node minus early start time of starting node must be equal to duration or other option is the latest completion of completing node minus latest completion of starting node must be equal to duration. So, these are the three conditions need to be satisfied if it is called as critical path. Let me explain the critical path along with the condition. See, for node 1, both earliest start time and latest completion time is equal. So, condition 1 is fulfilled. This is the starting node. The ending node is 4. So, here also for ending node also, the earliest start time and completion time both are equal. For node 6 also, the earliest start time is 9 and latest completion time is 9. So, both are equal. The next one is node 7. For node 7 also both are equal. The last 8th node also both are equal. Now we have got the critical path. See now we have got the critical path. Now we need to highlight the critical path. So node 1 to 4. Then node 4 to 6. Then node 6 to 7. Then node 7 to 8. So, this is the critical path that is 1 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 7 and 7 to 8. This is the longest path in the network. So, this is called as critical path. Let us check the conditions for critical path. The first condition is uh, earliest start time of uh, each starting node must be equal to latest completion time of each starting node. 
for this particular activity one is the starting node and four is the ending node for the first condition earliest start time must be equal to latest completion time okay the first condition fulfilled the second condition is earliest start time of ending node is equal to latest completion of the ending node must be equal again see the same activity see for activity c 1 is the starting node and 4 is the ending node. For ending node, see the earliest start time is equal to latest completion time. So second condition also fulfilled for the one particular activity. The third one is uh, earliest start time of completing node minus uh, early start time of starting node must be equal to duration or other option is uh, the latest completion of completing node minus latest completion of starting node must be equal to duration see for activity c 4 is the ending node okay the condition is uh, earliest start time of ending node minus uh, earliest start time of starting node must be equal to duration see 4 minus 0 is equal to 4 or another option is there now that is latest completion time of ending node minus latest completion time of starting node that is 4 minus 0 is equal to duration so 4 minus 0 is equal to 4 see we have verified the three conditions for the first activity the same thing is applicable for 4 and 6 and 6 to 7 and 7 to 8 so this is the way to find out the critical path so node 1 to 4, 4 to 6, 6 to 7 and 7 to 8. So now we have to find the expected completion time. For 1 to 4, duration is 4 weeks. 4 plus and 4 to 6, duration is 5 weeks. Plus from 6 to 7, 6 to 7 duration is 5 weeks plus from 7 to 8 duration is 3 weeks so total 17 weeks 4 plus 5 9 9 plus 5 14 14 plus 3 is equal to 17 weeks this is the expected project completion time look at the problem so far we have calculated three things the first one is uh, we have constructed the project network and we have got the expected duration time and variance of each activity and we have got the critical path and expected project completion time now we need to find the fourth one that is what is the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks let us see the calculation for this in order to find out the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks we need to have three informations first one is activities on the critical path and the mean duration and the last one is variance for the critical path look at the project network first we need to know down the activities on the critical path so first activity is c second one f and third one h and the last one j so these are the activities on the critical path c f h and j second one you have to write the mean duration for the critical path for c four weeks for f five weeks for h five weeks for j three weeks so these are the expected duration for the activities on the critical path so mean duration and expected durations both are same only for c four weeks for f five weeks for h five weeks for j three weeks total 17 weeks okay in the same time you have to note down the variance on the critical path we have already got the mean duration and variance now you have to write down only the variance on the critical path so c is the first activity on the critical path no so for c variance is 1 for f variance is 1.78 for h variance is 1 for j variance is 1 now you have to write down these values 1 1.78 1 and 1 for c 1 for f 
1.78 for h 1 for j also 1 now get the total 4.78 see 4.78 is the sum of the variance of all the activities on the critical path so now we have to apply one formula in order to find out the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks so probability of x less than or equal to 22 weeks so x value is less than or equal to 22 weeks look at the problem what is the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks okay so on or before 22 weeks no so x value is less than or equal to 22 weeks so we have formula probability of x that is 22 x denotes 22 x minus mu mu represent mean duration for the critical path that is mean duration is 17 weeks so x denotes 22 so 22 minus 17 divided by sigma okay sigma is the standard deviation value is 4.78 no so therefore we need to find sigma less than or equal to x represent 22 minus mu represent 17 weeks divided by sigma so first we need to find sigma value so this is the standard deviation no so therefore sigma is equal to root of 4.78 you will be getting 2.19 weeks let me show the calculation on the calculator root of 4.78 is equal to 2.186 so you can round up the figure 2.19 2.19 weeks so just apply this 2.19 now probability z less than or equal to 2.28 okay 22 minus 17 divided by 2.19 you will be getting 2.28 let me show the calculation 22 minus 17 divided by 2.19 you will be getting 2.28 so z value less than or equal to 2.28 now we need to find the probability with the help of standard normal distribution table this is the standard normal distribution table here z value is given in the left hand side so here you have to take 2.2 so our value is 2.28 no so first you have to take 2.2 in the left hand side take 2.2 so 2.2 is there no just make a note 2.2 is there and remaining 0.8 we need to add 0.8 that is 0.08 by adding this value you will be getting 2.28 so in the left hand side you have to take 2.2 in the upper side you have to take 0.08 so look at the upper side z value 0.08 no so here you have to find the intersecting point okay 2.2 and 0 0.08 so intersecting point is 9887 that is 0 0.9887 so this is the way to find out the probability with the help of standard normal distribution table so the probability value is 0 0.9887 see this value is obtained from standard normal distribution table therefore the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks is 0.9887 that is 98.87 percentage look at the problem so far we have done these things the first one is construct the project network second one find the expected duration and variance of each activity third one find the critical path and expected project completion time and the last one what is the probability of completing the project on or before 22 weeks hope you all understood all these concepts thank you